trigonometric ratios. In the last video, we learned that any right angled triangle has sides that are the opposite, the adjacent, and the hypotenuse. In this triangle here, we'll label, always label the hypotenuse first, then go to the angle marked here by theta that we care about, go opposite to that angle to get the opposite side, and the side that's touching that angle that isn't the hypotenuse is the adjacent side. We also learnt that every particular angle has its own special ratio when we do the opposite side divided by the adjacent side, and it's also got the ratios for opposite over hypotenuse and for adjacent over hypotenuse. And that's every pair of sides. We don't need to do them the other way around, adjacent over opposite. We just need to be able to compare every possible pair of sides out of that triangle. This is done, and we'll learn more about that later, in order to find distances when you're out at sea. How far away are you from a dangerous cliff? It's used to triangulate on positions to learn if a plane is close enough to a particular point. Now, because we have to use these ratios a lot, these are our three important ratios, we don't want to have to keep saying the ratio of the opposite side over the adjacent side. So mathematicians gave them all names. The first one we looked at is called the tangent ratio and it's opposite over adjacent oops spelling and when we write it let's get rid of that equal sign when we write it we use its nickname tan they've all got a short nickname and we say tan of the angle. So we write tan theta because it's the opposite side of the angle divided by the adjacent side of the angle and that's opposite over adjacent. The second ratio that I gave you there is the sine ratio. It's just that's just its name. They had to give it a name. They couldn't call it Fred. They called it sine. It's got an abbreviation too. We just knock off the E. We, come, we bring these down all to three letter names. It's still pronounced sine. You must put in the theta sign because it means, or theta symbol, because that means the sine ratio related to theta is the opposite from the angle divided by the hypotenuse of that triangle. And our last one that I've got there is the cosine ratio and its abbreviation I'm sure you can guess is cos and we say cos of the angle is adjacent over hypotenuse. All these are is names. They had to give these ratios names to make it easier and there they are. The three trigonometric ratios we must learn them and we must always write them exactly like that with the theta sign. We can if we want just use A, H and O for opposite adjacent and hypotenuse. Now remember in the last video, we saw this triangle. Let's leave our ratios in. 
and we discovered that it's opposite over its adjacent, let's just label them, opposite, adjacent, hypotenuse, its opposite over adjacent was 3 over 4, which was 0 0.75. And now we know that that is its tan ratio. So we write it tan of the angle, tan theta, equals opposite over adjacent. We substitute in the opposite and the adjacent, and we calculate 0 0.75. And I said in the last video, only one angle has exactly 0 0.75 as its tan ratio. And there's lots of different ways we could find out what that angle is. Just let me move my screen a moment. Here's one way we can work that out. This isn't showing up. Oh, that's annoying. Sorry about that, I had to move this. This is a table of trigonometric ratio values. You see it's got each of the ratios that we might use, and it's got some different angles, 0, 5, 10 degrees, up to 60 degrees. It does go further on. Now, which ratio did we have for our triangle here? We had the tan ratio, and we got 0 0.75. So we go to our tan ratio table and scroll down, getting closer to 0 0.75. You'll notice it's becoming larger and larger, 0 0.7 or oh, 0 0.8. What angles are those? 35 degrees and 40. Somewhere between 35 and 40 degrees is the size of this angle. Now that's not very accurate. We can say, oh look, our angle is somewhere around 35 to 40 degrees. But that table wasn't very accurate and we don't use tables anymore. The perfectly accurate tables are stored in your calculator. So we can ask the calculator what angle has a tan ratio of 0.75 and we'll get an answer. It's a little bit complicated. Does this calculator do it? <gasps> Look, it doesn't. Do we have, well, yeah, we've got a scientific calculator. But that doesn't look like yours, so for the next video, I'll find one that looks like yours and we'll be okay. Because all this video is about is just introducing these three ratios and a little bit about how we use them. Let's just do the tan ratio for a very different triangle. Tan of the angle is opposite over adjacent. We write it like that every single time. That equals the opposite, label our sides, opposite, adjacent, hypotenuse. Every single time you must label your sides. The opposite is 1.8, the adjacent is 17, and we grab our calculator and work that out. We have 1.8 divided by 17. Look, 0 0.1058, let's make it 0 0.106, and that is tan of the angle. See how, for a very different triangle, it's a very different ratio. Every different angle here will have a very different ratio and we could go back, we've got to remember tan is 0 0.1 approximately. When tan is 0 0.1, somewhere between 5 degrees and 10 degrees. Again, we don't need to know how to do that with the table. I'll teach you how to do this with a calculator. The whole point of looking at that is to say, hey, 
there's these three different ratios we can have and each one is going to be different for every different size of angle in a right angled triangle. To learn these angles, there's a little rhyme that a lot of people will teach you. And it's some old hags can't always hide their old age and that stands for sine of the angle is opposite over hypotenuse cos of the angle is adjacent over hypotenuse and tan there tan of the angle is opposite over adjacent however you remember sine cos and tan and which sides they are, you do have to remember it. 